Ever wondered how to build an in-circuit, isolated, low-frequency current measurement probe that can be connected to an oscilloscope? No? That means you're a normal person. Good for you. But for any other weirdos out there, here's how I built mine. Before anything else, let us see why we would want to build such a thing. Proper current probes already exist, right? Well, if you have a few hundred bucks to spare, sure, it will work better anyway. But if you want to spend a week building and tweaking a circuit that might not even work at the end, and might cost just as much as a cheap commercial probe, then this video is for you. Now that we decided that we definitely need one, and we want to build it, let's see how. First, let's be clear on what we can obtain. Since it will be an in-circuit probe, it won't have a fancy clamp like the ones that are normally bought. It will be soldered into the current pad. This, in certain cases, is an advantage. By removing the clamp, we also remove the large wire loop. At this point you might be thinking, if we are building a low-cost device, why not a simple current transformer? Well, the current transformer only measures AC current. If you want to measure DC also, it won't work. Now, the last thing that we could do is use a simple shunt resistor. Connect the oscilloscope to it, and it will measure both AC and DC, and with quite a high bandwidth. Sure, it'll work, as long as one terminal is at ground potential, or if we're using a differential measurement. But that would just be ignorant. Also, it wouldn't be an isolated measurement. The oscilloscope would be directly connected to the measured circuit. Now, the easiest way to measure a current by an indirect measurement is to use a hole sensor. It has quite a complicated operating principle, so if you're really curious, just google it. So let's see, we want something not usually on the market, quite hard to build, and the sensor so sounds like a large ventilated area. Good, we're on track. Now let's look for such a sensor. These components do exist on the market and are a bit cheaper than the dedicated probe. We will need something cheap, but not very cheap. And also, it should be in stock. And that should do it. I'll get this one, let's see it. Hmm, well, this looks simple enough. Five minutes, it should be done. Hmm. Sensitivity. This tells us what the relationship between the measured current and the output voltage is. 40 millivolts per amp? Well, that's useful. Unless you want to measure with a mathematical table of conversion values, you will need to add an amplifier to change the sensitivity to something like 1 volt per amp or 0.1 volts per amp. So, circuit like this, complete with variable reference, gain adjustment, filtration capacitors, multiple ranges, no, 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 that won't work, some connectors, that should be it. If you're wondering how this circuit works, just google inverting amplifier with op amps. Okay, before I build it, I'll just quickly simulate to make sure everything is in order. Hmm, looks a bit in reverse. Oh yeah, inverting amplifier. The output is inverted in reference to the input. Well, just switch the input polarity and done. Looks perfect. Also, the bandwidth needs to be checked. And more than enough. Good. Quick layout. And let's start assembly. Got my PCB here. First, I'll just put some solder paste on the board. Gotta put just a little bit on each pad. Then I got to add the SMD components. Slowly, one by one. This is gonna take a while. Now, finally, a quick trip to the oven. Let it sit there and bake for a few minutes and just watch the solar paste melt and make a bit of smoke in the meantime. Now, let it's baked, gotta add the vias, again, one by one, solder it on both sides. Finally, add the remaining through hole components, good thing there's only two, the connectors, and done! Wasn't that hard, really? Now comes the fun part, time to see if it actually functions. Sure it will, it must work, it will work, it doesn't work. I'm getting two and a half volts on the USB and one of the components is burning my finger. Typical first try, of course. Well, I managed to mix up the supply pins of the op amp. Look, it's the symbol's fault. Just look at it. No clear indication whatsoever. 
Well, just gonna swap these two and hopefully that's the only issue. Okay, made the modifications, let's try again. 447, better than before, so I got that sorted out. And before the filter, it's the same, so no increased current consumption, good. Now let's check the output voltage, should be happy to supply 224, perfect. The next step will be to measure some currents, at the end of the day, that was the purpose of the device, right? So I'm connected to the oscilloscope, and get a shunt resistor, connect the voltage probe so I can measure in parallel the current with the secondary measurement, and finally wire everything up to the power supply. Now just gonna set the voltage scales and offsets so everything is lining up and it's showing exactly the same value, and let's see. Okay, first it's uncalibrated, it's normal, signals are not matching, of course, but with a bit of tweaking, and, oh look, the voltages match, it works, thank god, I mean, I mean, I mean, I never had a doubt, I always knew it was gonna work, there was no question about it. Finally, just to check the transient to see the response time, and, perfect, good signal matching. In conclusion, this circuit works, and can be of valuable help during DIY project building and debugging. It will help you measure both static and dynamic currents that occur in any circuit. Hope you got some useful info out of this, and let me know if you try to build a circuit. Leave your thoughts in the comments, and see you next time. Bye bye.